So here we have our blast and let's start working on our camera now. Let's go up a level to the object context and I will drop down a camera and I'll just create a very simple camera rig. I will grab this camera node and press enter in my viewport and I just want to bring this back in the Z value a little bit. And I will turn off my geometry for now. Let's drop down a null and I will rename this to camera pivot. And if I link the camera to this camera pivot, which is in the center of our scene, I can now control the rotate Y value over here and we can see that we can create a simple orbiting animation uh, this way. Let's set this back to zero. And I also want to make this camera look at our null. So when I bring this camera up on the translate Y, I want this to be looking uh, towards the center of our scene always. Let's set this back to zero. And let's go to our constraint tab over here. And I will choose a, let's select the camera node, choose a look at constraint. So click this look at, select our null over here and press enter and then press enter again. So now we have some constraints for the camera and if I do the same thing that I did earlier with the translate Y, we can see that the camera is always going to be pointing at the center of our scene or rather at this pivot. Let's bring this back to zero. Let's make some space over here. Let's turn on the geometry and let's look through our camera. So I'll just drag this into our viewport. So with this camera selected, let's bring it up a little bit. Okay, and let's maybe choose another frame. And we can sort of create, uh, we can push in or push out the camera if I select my camera pivot and I animate this uniform scale value here. So if I increase this, we can see that we create this push out animation. Let's maybe, let's see where what angle we want to capture. So let's maybe increase the uniform scale. So let's push this camera out and let's find a right angle here. Let's also go to the camera and go to the view and I want to set the focal length maybe to 60. So we can have more of a wider shot. Go back to my camera pivot and go to my uniform scale. And again in this camera pivot we can increase the rotate and let's maybe Let's set this to zero and let's choose an angle here. So maybe something like this. You can obviously choose whatever angle you find more interesting for your own explosion. But in my case, I think this should be good. And maybe increase this pushing a little bit more. Okay, let's maybe check the animation. While I'm working on this animation, it might be beneficial if I go inside my effects and maybe use the low quality pieces instead. So I will grab this node over here and let's duplicate this object merge with our high quality pieces, paste our low quality pieces in our transform pieces and just preview this instead, which scrubs a lot faster in the timeline. Okay, and after we create anim the animation, we will switch it back to the high quality version. So let's go back up to my camera. Let's grab this camera pivot and maybe just bring this up a little bit. So maybe negative uh, 0.5. So let's preview the animation and maybe we can even push out further than this. So we wanna encapsulate the whole destruction area. Okay, so this should be fine. So from here, maybe at around frame 70, I will add a keyframe to where our uniform scale is currently. Let's go back to the beginning and right where our explosion starts to happen, maybe at around frame, mm, let's say 25. Let's bring this all the way down from up close. Okay, and let's also bring up my translate Y just so this is nicely centered. So maybe 0 0.1 instead. So we essentially create a zoom out animation right where the explosion happens. And now we can shift click this value here and let's adjust our keyframe curves. So I will press F to zoom in on our keyframes and let's adjust this curve a little bit. So hold down control and I will grab this handle and bring it all the way over here and hold down control and scale this down a little bit as well. So we, we should now have a fast zoom out that slowly adjusts and uh, settles over time. 
Let's maybe add another keyframe by holding Ctrl Alt and clicking on this curve and bring this over and readjust this curve a little bit. Okay, and let's see how this will look. Let's maybe create a flipbook now. Alright, so I kind of like the timing actually of this result. So this will be fine for me. On top of this, I also want the camera to be slowly rotating around our center object. Let's close this and I'll grab both of these nodes and we don't need to see these in the viewport so I will just turn off the display for them. Let's grab our camera pivot and for this rotate value, I also want to add a little bit of rotation over time. So here I can just say that the current value that we settled on, so maybe 230, let's uh, add let's add to this value the time. So I can type here dollar sign $t. So now our camera will also be orbiting around this center point. And I maybe want to orbit this a little bit faster, so I will just multiply this time value by 3. Alright, and let's offset this animation a little bit and I will set the rotate value to 220. Let's maybe scrub the timeline a little bit. So maybe 225. So this is pretty good. Let's create another flipbook. Okay, so now the orbiting adds a little bit more life to the whole scene and I'm quite happy with the speed of it. Okay, one final thing that I want to add overall is a little bit of noise to the rotation of this camera. So for my camera pivot, I can right click this translate and I will go to motion effects and choose a noise here. Okay, and by default this will be uh, way too strong, so let's maybe just drop down the roughness and the amplitude. And let's maybe scrub the timeline a little bit. So I think this is a little bit too strong, maybe drop down the amplitude even more. And let's reduce the exponent value as well. So we make this noise a little bit more uniform. And let's uh, make this a, a little bit slower and increase the period. Okay, so we are adding a little bit of slight noise to our camera and it will just make the camera seem a little bit more realistic. So I'll leave all of these settings completely up to you and your own personal uh, preferences. Let's maybe create a flipbook and see the result. So now we also have a little bit of camera shakiness going on. And I think our noise is making our camera a little bit off-centered. And let's maybe go back to our camera pivot and we can adjust some of these translate values a little bit. Let's see if we can recenter this a little bit. Okay. So I think this is a little bit more centered now. And this should be fine. As a final adjustment, I want to go back to my uniform scale value here, which is the pushing of the camera. And let's maybe not start from such a close up angle. I'll just bring the first keyframe up a little bit. And let's create a final flipbook and hopefully everything should be good. Okay, so this will be our camera animation.